Installation of V-Packings and Lip Packings Preparation For a successful installation of the seals, please note the following. Make sure that the mounting position and orientation of the sealing element in the housing is correct. Carefully clean all related components prior to installation. All edges of the housing and of the lead-in chamfers must be rounded and burr-free. Prior to installation, the seal should be coated sparingly with suitable assembly grease or a small quantity of operating medium. This eases the installation procedure and minimizes associated risks. Installation requires a fitting tool and a hammer. The fitting tool should be slightly rounded and should follow the inner contour of the seal without cutting into it. If available, suitable half shells with a manually controlled hydraulic hoist may also be used. Prior to installation, measure the height of the complete packing set at several positions. While measuring, firmly press the upper ring with the heel of your hand downwards to avoid clearance. The average value, minus 2%, equals the dimension L of the housing. Adjust the length of the housing to equal this L measurement by choosing appropriate gland shims. Cutting to size of each component. V packings with an inner diameter of up to 400 millimeters are supplied ready to use to fit the nominal diameter. V packings with diameters above 400 millimeters have an oversized circumferential length and must be cut to size before installation. The cutting must be done with a knife. The use of a saw would not lead to a smooth cutting surface and is therefore not permitted. The seal kits must be cut to the specified size directly prior to installation. Extended storage times of ready-cut seals under unfavorable climate conditions may adversely affect the correct functioning of the V-packing kit. In line with the installation sequence, start the procedure with the bluntly pre-cut support ring. This ring needs to be cut in a way that provides an undersized circumference so that after mounting, it can center itself in the groove of the V-ring. To do this, place the support ring around the plunger in such a way that the ends overlap. Mark the excess length on one side and cut the ring to size at an angle of 90 degrees. During the determination of the cut marks, the support ring is situated tightly around the plunger. However, the actual working position of the support ring is centered within the V-ring, detached from the plunger. This dilation automatically creates the necessary circumferential undersize of the ring. Once installed, there is a small gap between the ends of the ring. The pressure ring in all V-rings, on the other hand, must be cut in a way which provides some extra circumferential length. This assures sufficient pressure at the joints once the elements are installed in the housing. The necessary additional length, E, can be found in table number one of the installation instructions. To proceed, take an open V-ring, which is pre-cut at an angle of 60 degrees, and place it firmly around the plunger so that both ring ends overlap, forming an upper end and lower end of the ring. Mark the allowance in length E along the upper end of the ring, starting at the tip, which is formed there by the pre-cut. Once you have marked length E, draw a line downwards at a right angle to the back of the lower end of the ring. From the point where the line starts across the lower end of the ring, draw a further line at an angle of 60 degrees, parallel to the cutting line already in place at the upper end of the ring. When cutting the lower end of the ring, take care that the cut edges mate without any gaps while taking the bending radius of the installed position into account. Repeat this procedure with the remaining V-rings and the final pressure ring. Please ensure that the necessary length allowance is always added. Pressure rings of V-packing sets are available with or without backup rings. They reduce the risk of extrusion and are either placed only at the inside diameter or additionally at the outside diameter. Plastic backup rings, if provided, must also be cut to size. If two backup rings are included, their size is initially identical, but the cutting to size is performed differently. To cut the inner backup ring, Place one of the rings around the plunger so that the ends overlap, forming an upper end and lower end of the ring. Draw a cutting line at an angle of 45 degrees across the upper end of the ring. From the starting point and the end point of that line, 
draw lines downwards at a right angle to the back of the lower end of the ring. Between these two lines, a second cutting line with the same angle can be drawn. Now, both ends can be cut. This cutting method ensures that both cut surfaces are parallel, regardless of the actual selected cutting angle. For the outer backup ring, draw the upper cutting line as described before. The lower cutting line must be placed in a way to allow extra length at the circumference. Please refer to table number 2 in the installation instructions for the length allowance E. Set the cut mark as described above with the V-rings. When mounted, the cut ends of the backup rings are allowed a gap clearance parallel to the cut surface of 0.5 mm and are also allowed to be oversized by 0.5 mm. Installation of the individual rings. The plunger must be positioned inside the housing. During mounting, each ring is inserted into the housing individually with the butt joint first. After that, pressure should be applied on the point opposite the butt joint in such a way that the loop resulting from the oversize will lie evenly over the entire circumference of the seal ring. This will ensure that the seal ring can be pressed relatively easily into the housing with the help of the fitting tool and the stud bolts, despite the oversized length of the seal. If the loop is localized at one point only, the further installation is much more difficult. The ring should then be pressed simultaneously at several points to its final position. This is best accomplished by means of mounting aids, such as half shells and a hydraulic hoist. When mounting the individual rings, please make sure that the butt joints are offset by 120 degrees, respectively. Axial tightening of the packing. Based on the described basic setting, the actual length of the housing can be adjusted by adding or removing shims. Careful installation and monitoring during the run-in time have a major influence on the lifetime of the seal. Particular attention should be paid to the temperature increase of the plunger during run-in. If there is a significant rise in temperature, it is possible to loosen the stuffing box gland a little through the addition of shims. If leakage occurs, even after an extended period of time, the stuffing box gland can be tightened through the removal of some shims. Freudenberg, innovating together.